The Backyard Naturalists podcast is presented by Backyard Birds in Matthews, North Carolina. Backyard Birds offers a unique in-store shopping experience, highlighting the joy and excitement of attracting wildlife with the finest quality seed and the best quality bird feeders, bird houses, bird baths, and more. Bringing people of all ages together with nature and wildlife, Backyard Birds has everything you need to create your own backyard natural habitat. Connect with Backyard Birds at thebirdfoodstore.com or on social media. Now, here's Debbie and Laurie, the Backyard Naturalists. Welcome to the Backyard Naturalist, the podcast about anything and everything related to nature. We appreciate you joining us and we'd love to have you interact with us by telling us what you'd like to hear more of or what you've enjoyed or questions about something that maybe we didn't explain as clearly as we could have. This is going to be one of our short episodes where we're just talking about a very specific topic and what we're talking about today is how you can use what are called pole systems to create wildlife habitats in your yard. It's a really easy thing. It's fairly inexpensive. And you could honestly probably put this together and have everything hanging up in an hour or less. less. So less. Laurie says yeah. less. We'll go with that. Yeah. So we're going to talk about why this fulfills all the requirements of a wildlife habitat, which you may remember because we've talked about it a lot on here would be food, water, water, shelter, places to raise young, and sustainable gardening. There you Did go, sustainable yeah. gardening yeah. Did practices. Did y'all rehearse that? No, no we didn't. Okay. We're just good like that. <laughs> <laughs> we should have had you list some. I could. I, I'm hoping you I, can, yeah. yeah. Have, my backyard is a certified wildlife habitat. There you go. And you got the neighborhood certified as a, a wildlife yeah, habitat as well. That. Yeah. All right, so... Here are the options. We're going to walk through the parts that you would have to get to do this and talk about some variables where you can make choices. You can choose this particular type of setup or that particular type of setup or add this to it or add something else to it. So we're going to start with the poles themselves. Laurie, talk about some of the options they have. We have a basic pole that you just stick in the ground, step mm -hmm. in the ground, has a little... Um, Oh, I can't think what they call it. It's like a wedge that goes in there. So it makes it very strong. We have single and double. Mm -hmm. And you can also add additional, like a little wraparound hook for those. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say single and double, what do you S mean by that? Single shepherd's hook that holds one thing yeah. or a double that would hold there two. There you go. And how, what's the height on these poles? Because it varies, right? right? They range anywhere from like four feet all the way up to six feet. Yeah, six and a half feet. So, so if that's what these are. Yeah, if you're looking at putting it on a, in a really small place, you might go with yeah. the the shorter yeah. one. And or a hummingbird you, feeder. Some people like it in the middle of their garden, yeah. so they put the little short one up yeah. there, and that's good. Um, the real popular one is the it starts out with a 74 inch pole. It's mm -hmm. a one inch pole. You can do a double, a trio, or a quad, mm -hmm. or a single. Um, and these are pretty. They look like plant hangers, right. basically. They're, yeah, it's a um, um, it's black. Mm -hmm. um, they have finials on top of them, yeah, decorative finials. Yeah. finials. Sometimes you can even buy a, additional can, finials if you want to change finials. it out. They have um, what they call a basket. It's just a woven part that goes between the pole and the um, hook, mm -hmm. the, uh, double sh the double or trio, whatever that part. That looks really good. It adds to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you, a, it's a decoration. It, it is, yeah. but it adds. It really looks nice. Mm -hmm. It makes it look nicer than just a pole in your yard. Um they come with a sleeve that you, you can pound the sleeve into the ground, the pole slides into it, or you can twist one into the ground. Mm -hmm. And that is my favorite. It's easier. You can, uh, there's all kinds of options. You can even go up. We have extensions for those six, nine, 20 inch extensions that you can put higher. Mm -hmm. You tell, can tell them about your customer who kept coming back because he was <laughs> having some problems. He was having problems with the squirrel. Bless his heart. I know he came back probably six times mm -hmm. and kept going up, up. I'm not sure how he ever reached the feeders, but he did. He, he said he's going to outsmart him. I don't know if he ever did, but finally he gave up mm -hmm. either way. Mm -hmm. um, these also come, you can add baffles, squirrel mm -hmm. baffles, raccoon baffles, two different kinds of baffles to add to it. Um, 
they're just very efficient, very efficient, very easy to install. And once you have it, you can just keep adding to mm-hmm. it. So yeah. that's good. And the shepherd's crook variety actually has two prongs on the bottom and, and a crossbar, and you just step on it, and they go into right. the ground. Right. So it's not that you have to dig a hole and put concrete in. I guess you could if you wanted to, but there's really no, no. need to. And the single ones, you can pound them in with maybe a rubber mallet if you want to, or if it's been raining a lot, you could probably just push it into push the it ground. Push it into the ground, the other one, screw. I've, I've never heard you, you ladies talk about this one until this episode. So, and, and again, we're not being paid for this, but um, I, I hear one thing, one commonality that I hear you guys talking about. This isn't complicated. No, this is, this is easy. It's Very add easy. water and stir. Yeah, easy. This, yeah, this is this is ramen noodles. Easy. Mm-hmm. This is, right. is if if someone it doesn't come with directions. Does, you don't need them. It doesn't mm-hmm. sound no. like, right. and, it, and it doesn't sound very intimidating. So, if mm-hmm. this is something that a beginner would want, this. Instead of going intricate and detailed and investing a ton of money in something, this sounds like it's a good, a good idea for beginners. Absolutely. Or okay. people that live in small areas that don't have a big backyard, mm-hmm. um, people who live maybe in a retirement community that have a little patio, mm-hmm. and so there's just not a lot of there's space. A, there's actually a patio stand for this one-inch pole. That We're going to talk about yeah, that, that, actually, because that that's just brilliant. It is. It is. Yeah. It's, um, I've seen some people use it in their yard, and it seems to work. So Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. You don't have to put anything in the ground that. it's It looks like a wagon wheel, right. I guess. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's circular, but it's weighted. And so it's probably going to be um, sturdy in a, a fair amount of wind, I would think. I don't think it's going to blow over. And I have to mention this um, company that we work with, we buy a lot of feeders from them. They came out with a colored pole system. It's the oh. same It's the same company. Uh, it's from Herba mm-hmm. out of Chicago. It's a great company, but um, it's a good quality is mm-hmm. what it is. But they have three or four different colors now. That what makes it, are those colors? Oh, Lord. It's, it's a test. It's, I, no, okay. Maybe, because I don't know. I, Blue, I, red, yellow, teal. Those are the three, four the I green? can think of. I would think there'd be a green. There must be a green. Okay. Yeah, there must be. Okay, so five. All right, there we go. And some of these are round. Some of these are square. Mm -hmm. Um, The round ones, I think, are slightly larger in diameter, but maybe, what, inch and a half max? They're inch. They're one inch. And then the square ones are, I don't know, half half an inch to an inch, depending on the size. Probably half inch. Really, really easy. And like I said, easy for putting them in the ground. You don't have to use tools. And, you know, we always hear... You come in and it's an investment to start with. Not a big investment, mm-hmm. but you know, you're going to put some money into it. Sure. But you go somewhere else and you buy a cheap little pole that's, mm-hmm. you know, half the price and it just doesn't hold anything. Your feeder's on the ground. Um, a raccoon comes up and knocks it down or, yep. you know, it just, it's, or it rusts and breaks in breaks half. half. If yeah. it's wood, it, it yeah. rots and breaks mm-hmm. in half. So this is, it's well worth the investment. Mm-hmm. And you're so, going to get frustrated and you're going to give up. Yeah. yeah. And you're going right. to say it didn't work. Well, right. right tools for the job are important. Right. So th- that's why I thought this would be a great little short topic because we're going to make it really easy. Now, once they've got their pole system installed, regardless of what choices they make, what can they hang on these poles? What can they not hang on these poles? <laughs> they can hang bird feeders, um, the little soot mm-hmm. feeders, mm-hmm. Um, bird bass. We have hanging bird bass yeah. that can hang on them. They can hang a plant on one side and a feeder on the other. Mm-hmm. A lot of people like to do that. So. Sure. Or a a rain gauge on Mm -hmm. one side, if you like to Mm -hmm. see that, something decorative. But basically, all the components of a wildlife habitat, Mm -hmm. food, water, shelter, places to raise young, could be put on this this pole system. Right. So, awesome. Where do they need to put this? What are the (laughs) options? That is wherever they want to put it, really. Mm -hmm. That's where, and wherever also um, HOAs allow it. But um, we have that going on sometimes. But um, you want to put it where you can see the feeders if mm-hmm. you're putting feeders out there you want to be able to see the birds so put it where where it looks good and where you can see the birds mm-hmm. and where the birds can dart into right. cover if, that if you have shrubs in your yard right. yeah mine is near my my kitchen window because that's where I stand in my pajamas and look out the window to see what's out there. But there's bushes nearby that they can get Mm -hmm. to shelter. Absolutely, on both sides, as a matter of fact. So this would go in your yard quite easily. A patio, a deck, a balcony, a porch. So if you think about it, it doesn't matter if you live in an apartment or on a farm or everything in between. This will work for you. And we also have deck clamps 
mm-hmm. that will hold bird feeders too. You just clamp them on a wooden yeah. deck and, and, and bird bats because I've got bat, one yes, on mine. On your, mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's different things to put on there too, yeah. on your deck too, in, in case you don't want to put anything out in your That's yard. right. And we're going to talk about that concept a little more with another short episode, so stay tuned for that. Now, let's just talk about cost. Give us a range because I don't know the cost. All of these products are sold at our presenting sponsor, Backyard Birds, which is located next door to Dairy Queen and Matthews. Okay, cost, let's say, if for I a, went short with one, a short shepherd's yeah, short, crook. A short one would be probably, let's say, $39, $40 for the okay. little four-foot one. Um, the one we talked about, the half-inch pole that you step in the ground is probably mm-hmm. $60. Mm-hmm. And then when you go with your parts, you know, with the pole system, anywhere from for the sleeve is probably uh, 15 to 25 Two dollars and the poles around, say twenty. I don't. I'm, I'm guessing these now. This is a range. Yeah. Trust me. Um, Twenty eight dollars. I should know this, but and I didn't then, pay any attention. The uh, the tops will start at like twenty two, go up to mm-hmm. forty five. So it's something that, that you can add on to. You can right. buy the pole. You can buy one accessory. As right. it gets more successful, you can go buy this. Right. It's something you can build upon. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. When I do Laurie's Facebook post and there's a, a holiday coming up, like Mother's Day, I like to post things that people can follow up on. So if they give the pole system one time, they can go back and get another arm to put on it or another feeder or another house or something like that. So you can keep adding to it as a gift giving. Yep. So you get, you get for Father's Day, you get in a starter set. Exactly. And then for maybe a birthday, you add something on. And mm-hmm. Christmas or birthday rolls around and you can keep adding to this. Sure. And you can always give food to put in the things that you, <laughs> you sure. bought to put on the, the uh, whole system too. get a big bag too. of Supreme. There and, you go. Yeah. We hope that you've kind of got an idea for what we're talking about. These pole systems are very simple to install. They're very sturdy. They're all made out of metal. Right. And most of them are solid. Some are some are hollow, but some are hollow. A good sturdy metal. Yeah, the pole system, the one inch pole is a it's hollow, but it's very sturdy. Mm -hmm. They're easy to put in the ground. They don't require tools. Nope. And it's not even hard. You can just step on some of them or push on some of them. And there's one that that looks like a, a a cultivator, I think, is the name of the tool that you just rotate and it yeah, goes that, into the ground. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Like a corkscrew. Right. Yes, exactly like a corkscrew. I'm surprised Laurie and I didn't think of that. Of all, of all people. <laughs> I know, go figure. <laughs> um, and then you can add different numbers of arms. So if you wanted to start very simple, you start with a really small one. You put one arm on it and you maybe put a hummingbird feeder on it somewhere right by you can see because those hummingbirds aren't generally bashful. They're going to come to where the food is. Mm-hmm. And then if you want to get a little more sophisticated, you can add a small birdhouse, maybe something for a wren, a little tiny mm-hmm. birdhouse for a wren or a house finch or a gold finch um, or rather a drawing a, a blank on the finch I wanted to name. <laughs> 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 uh, a house wren would be another thing and add a bird bath to it. And before you know it, you've got everything you need to create a wildlife habitat right there and it's a one-time expense it's a great investment in the joy of being outside and watching whatever's in your yard anything you want to add to this no i just think um as we talked about earlier the price point of the first investment you know the first initial investment is well worth it Mm -hmm. it just it really is and the the investment can be whatever you you choose it can Mm -hmm. be a really streamlined model or it can be something a little more decorative it's totally up to the individual hope you've enjoyed this little short episode talking about using pole systems for wildlife habitats i'm debbie and i'm laurie we're the backyard naturalist and we're signing off While recording the Backyard Naturalist podcast, Debbie and Laurie enjoy coffee provided by the Good Cup Coffee Company in Matthews, North Carolina. Follow Good Cup Coffee on Instagram and look for them at the Matthews Community Farmers Market this Saturday morning.